All right, y'all. Full disclosure. I have been recording this for probably uh, 35 minutes and have been drinking this um, the entire way. For some reason, my uh, recording failed. So um, I was about 12 pages in. Was it 12? Yeah, about 12 pages in, and I got nothing. Uh, <laughs> the internet has been un unkind to me. So I'm going to burn through some of these first pages. Uh, long story short, go and read the complaint. God damn it, I'm so mad that this hasn't been recording this entire time, because uh, I must say I'm brilliant. Um, very unprofessional of me. I'm your dick show attorney, uh, Nicholas Ricada of Ricada Law. By the way, Ricada Law. Justice, it's like revenge, only better. I'm a lawyer in central Minnesota, so uh, I'm not a specialist in New York law. And my commentary on this is not supposed to be legal advice in any way. Uh, but I thought I'd go through it because most of the... You'll notice most of these concepts are common law concepts, which are applicable across any state jurisdiction. There's very little in the way of statutory... Uh, specific to New York statute um, uh, information here, and and it's very straightforward. This lawsuit is very straightforward. So I'm going to rely on you because I have royally fucked up, and I just can't drink enough to go on. But I'm going to try and go through this page by page. So Maddox and uh, Jane Doe, who is Metal Jess, let's make no mistake, have brought suit against uh, Dick... Foundation Digital, which is Ditch, di <sighs> holy shit, I've been drinking, which is Dick's company. Uh, Greg Bozer and Lauren Baker, who are both founding partners of Foundation Digital. Um, CMGRP, which is Weber Shandwick, which is uh, Asterios' employer. Also, Joshua Kaufman, who I believe is general counsel for Weber Shandwick, which doesn't make any sense. And you'll, we'll get to that. Uh, Asterios himself, Trevor Burt, who is Mad Cucks. Patreon Incorporated, and Jordan Cope. <laughs> so apparently Patreon is involved in all this. I am so sorry. I am super drunk. And most of this is really fucking boring. The first couple pages uh, are related to jurisdiction and venue. Um, they name the plaintiffs and defendants. <sighs> they name the plaintiffs and defendants. And um, if you'll notice, most of these defendants don't reside in New York City. But it claims that all of them do business in New York. For example, it claims that Maddox does business in New York, which he kind of does because he works with Simon & Schuster, who's, who's headquartered in New York. Uh, Metal Jess uh, do, doesn't do business in New York. I don't know why she's listed here. Uh, Defendant Dick, Dick Masterson, Dax, Dax Herrera, uh, is VP of Foundation Digital. And it says that Foundation Digital does business in New York. Um, but... Does Dick do business in New York? Because if you're suing Dax on behalf of Foundation Digital, that's one thing. But if you're suing Dax as an individual, he has to do business in New York, which I don't think you've established. Greg Bozer and Lauren Baker, co-founders of Foundation Digital, it says that they do business in New York. Do they, as individuals, do business in New York? If they don't, dismissed with prejudice, you idiot. Uh, Weber Shandwick is Asterios' employer. It is headquartered in New York, and New York uh, is where Asterios lives and works. So he's the only person with relevant contact to New York that I can find. Tab, uh, Trevor Burt, uh, also known as Mad Cucks, is uh, an individual residing in Oklahoma conducting business in New York. Tab, you do theater, right? How many productions have you done in New York City? In New York State? I'm guessing a lot. You, It must be because it says so. Patreon Inc. does business in New York, maybe. Uh, I don't know. So all of this is based on what's called a long-arm statute. And a long-arm statute is a statute inside a state that gives establishes uh, what's called minimum contacts. If you're my law buddies out there, you'll know this from International Shoe, um, the case International Shoe, in which you have to have a sufficient amount of business contacts in a state to bring suit in the state's jurisdiction. Otherwise... The state doesn't have jurisdiction over you or the defendant. And most importantly, the, the state has to have uh, 
jurisdiction over the defendant, which means that the incident in question, the transaction, the accident, the incident, the assault in question has to occur within the state's jurisdiction or, or the person involved has to have sufficient contacts within the state uh, to give the state jurisdiction over them under their long arm statute. I have not researched the two statutes involved because they're in New York and I don't give a shit. I would say that it's likely not true that the state of New York has jurisdiction over anyone outside of Asterios, uh, Foundation Digital, maybe, Weber Shandwick, and probably Patreon. Because Weber Shandwick and Patreon definitely do business in New York. Foundation Digital, it appears, does business in New York. But all of the individuals outside of Asterios don't live in New York. And unless they have specific business dealings within the state, it doesn't qualify. Uh, and before you say Dick Show is downloaded in New York State, that doesn't matter. It matters if Dick targets New York State and engages in the protections of New York State with his business. Um, you have to willfully enter what's called the stream of commerce. Again, my international shoe people are going to be probably orgasming right now. But you have to enter into the stream of commerce intentionally to be involved in the jurisdiction of a state, to willfully avail yourself of the protections and jurisdiction of the state. I have no evidence that any of these people have done that. And full disclosure, uh, in having skimmed through this case, um, Maddox never provides it. So he says that the court has jurisdiction under these statutes, which is likely not true for most of them. And venue is proper. Venue is not proper. It says venue is proper pursuant to CLPLR 503. None of the defendants outside of Asterios live in New York City. So all of them are located in L.A. For venue to be proper... For venue to be proper, you have to have a locus of either the transaction or the evidence, the majority of the evidence. Uh, otherwise, you're unreasonably burdening um, defendants in the case to fly from Los Angeles to New York to appear when all of the evidence is in fucking Los Angeles. You idiot. None of the evidence is in New York City except maybe your thin argument on Weber Shandwick and Asterios. That's it, though. Everything else is in Los Angeles. So the proper venue is a Los Angeles court applying New York law. If this is valid, we'll see. Okay, so statement of facts. Guys, I've been through the first 35 or so paragraphs in my failed recording. And I just can't do it again. Basically, Maddox, uh, in sum talks about how he wrote the alphabet of manliness he had the best page in the universe and that uh, he and dick entered into an agreement on the biggest problem in the universe um, to start a podcast and that podcast at some point ended he then goes on to to talk about dick and here's where i'm going to pick up because i just can't i can't tell the story of this lawsuit without starting here even though i'm getting really really drunker by the minute so the most lucrative aspect of uh, Dick's business, this is paragraph number 21, right under defendant, the subheading Defendant Dax Herrera and the Dick Show. The most lucrative aspect of Dick's business and vitriol against plaintiffs in his podcast entitled Dick Masterson is creating the Dick Show, here and after the show, uh, which is distributed through Patreon described below. Presently, the show has approximately 3,200 patrons paying between 19,673 and 22,000 per month. The show is linked to Dick's YouTube station. It's a channel, you fucking idiot. It's a channel. And other social media such as Facebook and Twitter. Patreon is an online platform that allows blah, blah, blah. We all know what Patreon does, right? Uh, Patreon takes 5% of the fees that are collected. So Patreon is making a mint off of Dick. They're making jack and shit off of Maddox and his like $4 Patreon. Good job, you fucking moron who can't monetize his own comedy. If I haven't advertised sufficiently, this is a 15-year Balmore. Single malt. Darkest. Sherry cask finished. With uh, notes of chocolate that come through after you breathe out. 
And they're just fantastic. I can't recommend this scotch enough. I'm a big Lagavulin fan, but Balmore is a solid scotch. Uh, compared, competitively priced, so go buy it. Balmore, you owe me money, fuckers. Defendant Dick, with other defendants here, and have used the Dick Masterson persona. So he's literally accusing the other defendants of using the Dick Masterson persona to create a lucrative business. Uh, you idiot. None of them are reaping the benefits of this except Dick. I mean, you could say Asterios is, but Asterios doesn't use a Dick Masterson persona. He uses the Asterios Kokonos uh, Greek SJW cut comedian persona. Jesus Christ. Based on creating violent and hateful content. It's not based on violent or hateful content, you fucking idiot. It's a science and rage-based podcast. It's in the description. Uh, and they encourage and incite their listeners and followers to threaten, stalk, harass, defame, and interfere. Okay. Threat. Assault. Uh, shit, where did I go? Uh, threat. Stalk. Sorry, not assault. Harass, defame. Uh, and those are all legal definitions. And you have to prove that they've done these things, which you have trouble with. Um, interfering with all aspects of personal and professional lives, not illegal. You can interfere with people's lives as long as you want. It's not a problem. For instance, one of Maddox's major sponsors was from a company called Harry's. Oh my God. Harry's dropped you because your podcast is garbage and they stopped getting the amount of contacts necessary to justify the expense. Holy shit, I'm so tired because this is so retarded. Harry's is an online business that sells razors and other men's shaving products. Defendant Dick created a harassment campaign. Dick, you motherfucker. Why am I not involved in this harassment campaign? I would love to participate. Why didn't you tell anyone about the harassment campaign that you're conducting? To destroy plaintiff's relationship with the company. Herrera encouraged his fans to troll through plaintiff's network looking for clips to take out of context. Where's your evidence? Herrera, then in coordination with his fans and other defendants herein, spammed Harry's social media sites. Uh, Dick, did you do that? Did you spam Harry's? With defamatory and outrageous accusations against Maddox. Um... They're only defamatory if they're false and adjudicated defamatory. You can claim something is a lie all you want, but claiming it defamatory is a legal conclusion, you fuckface. You haven't proved anything is defamatory. No court of law has ruled it's defamatory. Everything Dick said, by the way, and that his fans, by, God damn it, I'm not going to let Dick take the credit here. I'm pretty sure it was Joel Chaco and, like, Angry Stove who led the charge against Harry's and Kendall and Hyde. Not Dick. Dick, you are a sidelined piece of shit. You sat out and you should have done something. Anyway, uh, these other people led the charge against these companies. And even if they did, defamation is only wrong if it's false. You had a dumb pile of garbage named Jesse... Piece of shit Stroud. Say the N-word on his podcast. It's 2017, buddy. I don't know if you've heard. I know that you're super social justice now. And you really care about uh, racial slurs, which you didn't seem to care about before. But you do now. And now that you do, you should know that a podcast making racial slurs is not okay to advertisers. Harry's advertised on your network. One of your network associates made a horrific racial slur against Denzel Welks. Why didn't you mention Denzel Welks in this, in this complaint? Denzel is clearly guilty. As guilty as all of these other people. Anyway, uh, he made a racial slur against Denzel Welks. That is not defamation. That is the truth. Harry's might not want to advertise. Anyway. A uh, defendant Dick willfully and maliciously encouraged his fans to contact plaintiff sponsors. Where? You provide evidence that he said hot goss would be coming. By the way, hot goss is not illegal, you fucking dummy. But you don't provide any evidence that he actually in, uh, encouraged his fans to contact the sponsors. And even if he did, not illegal at all to contact a sponsor and voice your opinion. 
As a result of the foregoing, Harry's canceled its sponsorship on January 9th, 2017. This decision was, by Harry's was based on a targeted harassment campaign. No. No, it was based on you failing to provide results for Harry's. You took the biggest problem, which Harry's was a sponsor, and then you alienated somewhere between 50 and 70% of your listenership by being a dumb cunt. And in doing so, you reduced the income that Harry's was provided. And you gave customers of Harry's that you helped find in The Biggest Problem uh, a platform to tell Harry's that they didn't like that they sponsored your stupid show anymore. Anyway. Prior to defending Herrera's campaign, Harry's was one of the plaintiff's largest and longest sponsors, giving $45 per thousand impressions. At the time of Herrera's harassment campaign, plaintiff was ad averaging... 30 to 40,000 downloads per week. Holy shit. Uh, based on 40,000 per week, plaintiff's lost res revenue uh, on a given week from Harry's roughly equals $1,800. Maddox, that's a bad business decision by Harry's. Let's see this. Okay. Harry's. I'm pulling up Harry's. Shop gifts. Harry's highest gift is $95. That means that to recover, to recover, Harry's has to have 20 new customers, new purchases of their highest dollar product per week, per week from you. Maddox, there is no way Harry's was getting 20 new business customers of their maximum product per week. Their main products, god damn it, their main products, they have products between $20 and $30. $20 is 100 new customers a week. A week. You don't go through a Harry's uh, Razor Kit in a week, much less a month. Like, that's the whole purpose. Their most popular products are 30 and $35. You dummy. Harry's wasn't making money on you and they found an out from their contract. Anyway, one of plaintiff's other primary sponsors, Kendall and Hyde, by the way, who did not deliver the promised products to their customers. You're talking about criminals who I think you grew up with because they're located in Salt Lake City too, where you grow up. Do you know Kendall and Hyde? Because there's literally no fucking way Kendall and Hyde would dump money into your broke-ass viewership for advertisement purposes on their $400 boots, you idiot. Uh, anyway, uh, they were targeted by de de Defendant Herrera's wrath for months, and he directed his fans. Again, you don't provide evidence that he directed his fans to do anything. Most of us realize Kendall and Hyde was a sham and you can just read any fucking review of Kendall and Hyde and how people are waiting six months for their promised Kickstarter products and not getting them and never getting them. You moron. Anyway, uh, defendant Herrera fans made numerous post tweets indicating that um, Maddox supported and advocated for rape. How does that feel, you idiot? Uh, and that Kendall and Hyde was therefore sponsoring and supporting a person that advocated and supported for rape. Listen, your book, The Alphabet of Manliness, uh, pff, The Alphabet of Manliness, which I I thoroughly enjoy, still think it's funny. By the way, you encourage groping, copying a feel. Our uh, chapter C, copying a feel, is groping and harassment and sexual assault. You do advocate these things in your book. Whether it's ironic or not is up for debate. We don't know. You're a different person then. Oh my God. Was your entire book a lie? Was all of that comedy a lie? Uh, this is paragraph 30, by the way. I'm really unprofessional, bad at keeping track. Defendant Dick incited... There's that word again and encouraged other harassment campaigns against plaintiff's other sponsors as well. In one such campaign, defend her Dick's followers used one of the plaintiff's co-sponsors 
<laughs> Candid, a social messaging app. By the way, Candid is basically communist. You communist pile of shit. Uh, this unconscionable and repulsive campaign was directed at Candid and at plaintiff's girlfriend, uh, plaintiff Jane Doe, whereby Dick's fans threatened and discussed raping plaintiff Jane Doe. By the way, um, no, they don't. Let's see. Uh, let me read these. This week on Best Debate, should Maddox's girlfriend get raped? Which side of the bait do you guys want to take? Because she needs to get raped. That is not a threat of rape. A threat of rape is, I will rape you, not should you be raped. It might be tasteless. It's not a threat, you moron. Next one, because she needs to get raped. That's the same one. Uh, God damn it. What's this say? We should run a train on Metal Jess. By the way, not rape, necessarily. Trains, uh, colloquially, involves uh, the um, sexual encounter of multiple people with a particular woman. Multiple men with one particular woman. And that is not necessarily rape. Most of, most often, the, they are actually not rape. So, um, by the way, go to Pornhub. Check it out. Uh Next, we need to bang metal chest. Banging is not rape. Banging implies consensual sexual activity. Uh, you have no point. That monkey should be raped is not a threat of rape. That is a statement that someone should or should not be raped. Again, these are tasteless comments. Welcome to the internet, you moron. You made tasteless comments for the past 20 fucking years. Uh, paragraph 31. Plaintiff Jane Doe has been targeted in the focus, target and the focus of uh, Dick and Mysterios and their fans for several months. They frequently leveled racial slurs. Did the defendants, no, no, defendants followers. You're not suing the defendants followers. That doesn't matter. Unless the defendants specifically direct a person to make racist uh, statements, they're not even close to illegal or um, even civil liability. Uh, and even if they did specifically do so, they're not necessarily illegal. Anyway, they invaded her social media account. Social media is a public platform, and your girlfriend is a public figure. She's a fucking model, you moron. Her whole life revolves around that social media. You can't invade a public forum. You can't invade it. And she has the ability, and she uses it liberally, to block people. Uh, business associates, friends, and disrupted her entire life to the point of causing her to seek therapy. I hope she found therapy. She's dating you, after all. As a consequence of living in perpetual fear and dismay. What is she afraid of? Literally, and you know this, you lying cunt. None of these people have actually threatened her, and nothing has come, despite, according to you, over a year of threats have occurred and none of them have come true because they're not actually threats and no one cares. It's internet comedy. Get over it. The foregoing vitriol against plaintiff Jane Doe has been at the behest of defendants. Being at the behest of someone is not necessarily illegal. You require a specific instruction to violate a statute. That is illegal. With their enthusiastic encouragement, in addition to the foregoing images above, foregoing and above is redundant. Fire your lawyer. Below is some of the other vile and racist rape and death threats. Are, are, they're plural, you moron. You just said threats. That's plural, are. The Jane Doe has been forced to encounter from people. She's not forced to encounter anything, you goddamn cuck. You can't force someone on the internet to encounter something. They have to go to it willingly. She has a public persona. Which means that until she blocks someone, she is willfully encountering them. She's actually counting on them to follow her. That's part of her business strategy. Uh, and these people are from all over the country. Notice you don't allege they're from New York because you can't substantiate that. Defendants have encouraged their followers as part of the show. You can encourage people to do all sorts of things. That's not the same as 
either incitement or acting as a third party. However, what is truly disgusting is that all the foregoing venom stems from defendant's direction. Does it provide evidence of the direction? You're talking about directing a, a fan base of something like 40,000 people. How would you communicate with 40,000 people? Are you alleging that Dick individually solicited each person who said something evil? Because you have to substantiate that, buddy. It doesn't just work on your stupid word. Which is to create content targeted at destroying Maddox's life. <laughs> That's the central principle of their business model. No, it isn't. No, it isn't. It's not even the central theme of the podcast. Much to our dismay, most people love the goss against you. And you've provided an ample amount today. Thank you so much. They love it, but that's not the central business model of the podcast. Below is an example of Defendant Herrera's ruthlessness and his misappropriation of Plaintiff Jane Doe's image and likeness for his own financial and perverse gain. Um, Dick is commenting on someone else's tweeted photo of Mental Jess. That's not Dick using the image. That's someone else using the image. You goddamn idiot. It would have to be Dick's tweet, and even then it might be legal. Okay. Below are the extortion and criminal harassment. This is not extortion or criminal harassment, by the way. Criminal harassment statute. And I know this because one of the people on your podcast actually did, under New York law, criminally harass uh, Joel Churi. Joel Chaco. Shit, I just doxed him. I think everybody knows by now. They actually did harass Joel Chaco. In fact, they called his mom. They called, uh, I believe, his employer. Um, they th made threats against him. This was at a person from your network, Jesse Powell Stroud, also known as Jesse Piece of Shit. By the way, if you want his parents' address, it's public domain. It's public record. We can send letters there. I'm just kidding. I won't give it to you. Go find it for yourself. It's public record. Anyway, uh, New York Penal Code states that Section 124.45. A person is guilty of stalking in the fourth degree when he or she intentionally and for no legitimate purpose engages in the course of conduct directed at a specific person and knows or reasonably should know that such, such conduct, colon. Now there are three sections. One is likely to cause reasonable fear of material harm to the physical health, safety, or property of such person, a member of the person's immediate family, or a third party which, with whom such person is acquainted. Reminder. The person on your network did this. No one on Dick's network has done this. Two, causes material harm to the mental or emotional health of such person where such uh, conduct consists of the following. Telephoning or initiating communication or contact with such person have people called Metal Jess. Um, a member of such person's family, have they called her family? Or a third party with whom such person is acquainted. Has, has anyone called an associate of Metal Jess? And the actor was previously clearly informed to cease that conduct. Did Metal Jess give affirmative notice to someone to cease the conduct? If not, it's not under the statute and it's not criminal. Three, is likely to cause such person to reasonably fear that his or her employment business career is threatened. Oh, wait a minute. I'm pretty sure that later in this allegation, you specifically threaten the employment of Asterios and maybe even Dick. Are you admitting to harassment under the New York Code? Where such conduct consists of appearing, telephoning, or initiating communication or contact at such person's place of employment or business, and the actor was clearly, previously clearly informed to cease that conduct. I don't know if Dick or Asterios clearly informed you to cease that conduct. I hope they did, and I hope you just admitted to a crime uh, in your, in your uh, stupid lawsuit, you dumb fucking pile of garbage. So next section, 35, numerous examples of Dick's defamation, that's a legal conclusion, you idiot, vitriol, and incitement, which is another legal conclusion. And by the way, vitriol is not illegal. Uh, but defamation and incitement are. Now let me, let me give a shout out and a law boner to any of my lawyer friends. Um, under Iqbal, uh, in your, your rules of civil procedure, Iqbal states that you must state a claim with facts leading to a conclusion, but you must not state 
a legal conclusion in your complaint. By stating that something is defamatory or incitement, you're reaching a legal conclusion, and the court is well within its right to completely ignore any paragraph or statement that includes a legal conclusion. Number 35 should be completely ignored based on your bad wording, you dumb pile of garbage. Uh, I'm not going to read through the examples there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine of these things, and none of them are actually examples of uh, defamation or incitement. None of them. Not even close. Paragraph 36. Defendants have created a Wikia page and a page on Encyclopedia Dramatica directed at plaintiffs that are filled with false allegations of sexually transmitted diseases. Dick Asterios and the other people named in this suit... Did you guys specifically create these pages? Because that's what it's alleging. Like, the fans of the Dick Show are not named as a defendant. And th if a fan of the Dick Show created the pages, you're not suing the appropriate person, Maddox. You have to sus substantiate that Dick had a participation in this. And if you can't, which, by the way, you can't because you don't support it, it's complete nonsense. Oh, my God. Defendants have also had contests to stalk and harass plaintiffs. Dick, why didn't you tell me of these contests? I really wanted to participate. I've been listening since day one. I'm a $20 Patreon. I cannot believe you have not informed me of the contests to stalk and harass Maddox. For instance... Dick held a billboard contest wherein Dick asked fans to send in designs of billboards placed near plaintiff's house to arrest and stalk him. That's not harassment or stalking, you idiot. And the billboard that you cite as evidence says the biggest problem in the universe available at biggest.dickshow.com. That's not threatening, harassing, stalking. That's nothing. That's literally an ad for thedickshow.com. And to drive traffic to it specifically. Taking out a billboard to drive traffic to your website is not in any way illegal. And he doesn't use any pictures of you. He doesn't use your name. There's nothing in this that would uh, be an improper use of your likeness. You didn't trademark any of this stuff. Your trademark claim really hasn't panned out well as far as I can tell. Anyway. Chapter 38. Defendants have also engaged in and inside what is known as doxing, whereby they incentivize. Incentivize by what? Did you provide Dick, did you pay money to dox people? Uh, for people to dox Maddox? Why haven't you told me? I would love to dig up private information on Maddox for pay. I would love to do that. Uh, and to har uh, so plaintiffs, their family, or their business associates to harass them and blackmail them with threats of revealing very private information, which defendants then release on their shows. So let's see. You've provided three examples. Please get some... Okay, so he's replying to Join Stephen and uh, Asterios and Maddox Rules. This is Dick Masterson. Please get some juice out of that. The guy will say anything to impress a woman. Okay. That's not an incentive by the way, and that doesn't have anything to do with private information on the plaintiff or their family or business associates or harassment. Then Dick posted uh, some stuff. Here's the whole album. Fuck it. I don't even know what these are. These are links to Imgur. How is that harassment? Blackmail with threats of uh, revealing private uh, inf intimate details of Leah. Um, threatening to, or no, it's not even a threat. It says, I see Leah, uh, deleted her mean comments, steered at me, but she didn't, uh, issue a retraction. So goss, that is not a threat of revealing private in, uh, intimate details of your friend. That's simply a statement or no, it's a question of goss, which is ambiguous at best, but in the worst light. The goss is in reference to something that Dick might say on his show about this person. None of which we know to be illegal, defamatory, or otherwise wrong. The next time, uh, Dick responds to... 
Holy shit, I can't read this because... Okay, let me just say, Maddox. When you're including evidence in a complaint, you include it as exhibits later on that you can cite to. You don't include tiny-ass thumbnail-sized pictures in line in your complaint. It's unprofessional, it's ugly, and it's poor form because the court isn't admitting these as evidence. You have to have an evidence tag on your exhibits so that they can be properly referred to in both testimony and in motions. Um, these little thumbnails don't qualify. So Dick is replying to Bad Odinson and Maddox Rules. I have the full timeline. I will drop more next time Maddox and his girlfriend's behavior displeases me. That is not a threat of revealing very private information. That is a threat of stating that he will say more, reveal more of something when you guys displease him. But that something isn't necessarily or actually illegal. He can recount his uh, course of events all he wants. You're a public figure, you dummy. Chapter 39. Paragraph 39. Holy shit. Further, defendants Herrera and Coconos have brought multiple, bought multiple target, targeted, targeted advertising campaigns on Reddit and Facebook, uh, targeting plaintiffs and uh, plaintiff Uzuzuyan's followers directly and suggesting that uh, Maddox's fans should unsubscribe from his podcast. Actually, no. Uh, here's the evidence you provide. As recently as September 5th, defendant uh, Dick bought a targeted advertisement on Facebook targeting Maddox's and their Maddox and their fans directly. Oh my God. Suggesting that Maddox's followers should unsubscribe from his podcast. Not true. Let me read it. Because you provided it. God, you're fucking dumb. Did your favorite podcast go on vacation this week? Unsubscribe. The Dick Show didn't and features all the biggest debates of our age, like ethnicity and wiener size, how to pee correctly, and our traps, trappity trap, trap, trap. Sean's performance review, The Red Cross, Asterios' alt-right business ideas, and Road Rage LA tickets on sale. None of that mentions you. Uh, it is targeted to fans of, uh, let's see, you, here's the other evidence you provide. One reason you're seeing this ad is that Dick Masterson wants to reach people interested in Maddox based on activities such as liking pages or clicking on ads. That does not mean that Dick is targeting uh, you and your fans directly. It means that someone believes that there are concurrent views between Dick Masterson fans and Maddox fans. It's an advertising decision, you idiot. But even if it is a targeted ad, specifically on your fans directly, nothing about that is illegal, and he doesn't suggest that the followers should unsubscribe from his po from your podcast, and even if he did, not illegal, by the way, to offer an opinion on someone else's product. Only illegal to lie about it. Likewise, Defendants also created fake advertising campaigns against plaintiffs. Were they fake? Paid for advertisements to circumvent from being blocked on plaintiff's, plaintiff's sites. Okay, uh, a fake advertising campaign would be not an advertising campaign. If you paid for advertisements, it's an advertising campaign, not fake. This process is relatively straightforward and easy to do. For instance, Dick, uh, defendants may buy an advertisement on Facebook or Reddit to circumvent blocks by bidding for a keyword or even interests that people follow. For example, if defendants target fans of Maddox, they can buy ads that only display to people who follow Maddox's Facebook page, which include Maddox and their friends who want nothing to do with them. So, here, defendant Kokonos explains it himself and how they did it to plaintiff. I know Dick does some Facebook advertising targeting people who like the Maddox page, but if he isn't, he should also be targeting people who like the biggest problem in the universe page. There's still people who listen to that show that don't know about this one. And then Asterio says, this is a good idea. I may have used up my spite budget for the month. Thanks, insane amount of Medi. Next month, I'll hit him on Facebook. Uh, and then it goes into the cost of the Facebook ads. Asterios should target 
fans of The Biggest Problem and fans of Maddox who might not know that Asterios has a Patreon in his own show. That is not illegal, you dummy. 41. Defendants do this specifically to harass plaintiffs and they know advertisements circumvent blocks. Kokonos admits to as much in the following in the following post. It's a link to the Waterboy leaks and Maddox can't stop it because it's an ad, not a post. Can't delete an ad, George. That says nothing about harassing someone. Oh, let me read the preview, previous comment, just to be complete. I'm confused as hell here. What is this post about, and why is Maddox not able to stop it? I'm a lower-level autistic peasant. <laughs> so forgive my lack of current understanding. Nothing in this implies or states harassment. It doesn't state it explicitly, and it doesn't imply it. God, you're dumb. Defendant Herrera is also using a caricature of plaintiff as the devil <laughs> in his posters and advertisements to promote a live show he purportedly gave on October 13th, 2017, whereby he sold tickets for $20. Maddox. Buddy. The caricature in the advertisement is for Road Rage LA. This didn't happen in New York City. It happened in Los Angeles. You're not in Los Angeles. You're suing in New York for some ungodly reason. You should sue in Los Angeles. What the fuck is wrong with you? Defendant Patreon and... So that's it. That's it against Dick, by the way. This is the funniest case against Dick I've ever seen. Defendant Patreon and Jordan Cope. This is a long segment, and I'm not going to go through all of it because reading all of it will take hours. But uh, basically... The theory of his case is that Patreon has community guidelines against harassment and hate speech and dangerous activity. And it says that Patreon has been notified of defendants' harassment campaigns. Harassments campaigns. Proofread. Proofread your document. And rape threats, none of which are threats on several occasions. However, they have yet to take down defendant Herrera's page and continue to receive a substantial amount of revenue from Herrera and other defendants herein. That's because they have determined that you are incorrect in your allegations. And until you prove otherwise, you are incorrect in your allegations. Patreon's lack of response when notified on at least seven occasions. Getting a bit thirsty there, Maddox. The specific users were inciting followers to harass, stalk, submit racist content, and advance rape and death threats directly to plaintiff Jane Doe. Even posting the threats to their pages is unconscionable and tantamount to being a willful participant in the threats. It actually isn't tantamount to being a willful participant in threats. Patreon has literally nothing to do with this. Literally nothing. Uh, they have conducted reviews. Um, actually, I think, do you even cite to their statements? We'll see. I don't remember. Really drunk. Here we go. On or about January 16th, Patreon was notified of Dax Dick's harassment campaign with information and documents, including Herrera's fans creating a rape, Herrera's fans creating a rape list. By the way, You've never substantiated that this is Herrera's fans. You don't know who created that rape list, you idiot. Doxing by his fans and targeted Twitter harassment. On January 18th, a follow-up email to Patreon was sent, whereby plaintiff again informed Patreon of defendant Herrera's harassment and threats. Let's hear you cry. I'm going to quote you. Herrera has attacked my girlfriend, private individuals I'm associated with, small businesses and companies I work with, disclosed my private finances on the air, and even made fun of and disclosed mental health issues my family is dealing with. I've been doing this for 20 years and I've never seen anything like this. Wait, you mean like you've never seen anything like this? I thought, didn't you get people fired by inciting your fan base to go after them based on a customer service event that wasn't even poor you just disagreed with like you had a nobody fired for that please let me know if there's any other information i can provide thanks let's see plaintiff maddox provided patreon with another follow-up on january 26 2017 and another instance of harassment and stalking on facebook by dick directly 
May 26th, uh, George made another complaint about the escalation of harassment, which included the release of Plaintiff Jane Doe's full private name. Private name? You mean her legal name? Names aren't private, you fucking idiot. Rape threats by Herrera's fans, doxing by his fans, and Herrera's threat to put up a billboard by Plaintiff House. Rape threats by the fans and doxing by his fans isn't done by Dick. You're not suing the fans. Herrera's threat to put up a billboard by the house. Putting up a billboard isn't a threat. You can put up a billboard anywhere you want. Anywhere. By the way, the billboard's in Los Angeles. You're in New York. On June 29th, 2017, Plaintiff George sent Patreon another email to make them aware of the racist death threats that Plaintiff Jane Doe received. You don't provide any evidence of this, so I can only assume it's the first ones. She wasn't receiving death threats. People were saying they would like her to die. That's a different thing than killing, so than saying they'll kill someone. And of uh, Dick's threat to release painted plaintiff's private letters to his ex-girlfriend. That's not a threat, by the way. And the possession of those letters are the those letters are in possession of the ex-girlfriend. She can authorize their release, you idiot. It's up to her. She's owner of the letters that you send, you thirsty cunt. Paragraph 51. July 28th. Plaintiff again contacted Patreon to make them aware that Dick's fans were stalking and harassing uh, Maddox in person. One of Herrera's fans left a harassing message on a sign-up sheet that Dick made at Comic-Con. Then the same fan called into Herrera's show to talk about the harassment. That is comedy gold. Uh, it doesn't matter. You're talking about Patreon's terms of service. Why are you arguing Patreon's terms of service in a court of law, you dumb idiot? On separate occasions, plaintiffs' friends and fans have contacted Patreon to advise of the same. And Patreon, according to their terms of service and their internal review, have rebuffed you every single time because you're really bad at this. Nevertheless, and despite the foregoing attempts, Patreon did nothing to stop the defendant's conduct and instead tacitly encouraged its continuation. Not illegal to tacitly encourage something, by the way. Uh, most of these crimes, harassment, stalking, um, assault, any of these things, are crimes of intent. They require a specific purpose, not a passive uh, endorsement. For its own financial gain, yes, Patreon makes money. They're a business. Therefore, the threats and harassment against Maddox uh, and Mental Jess continues unabated on their pages, while Patreon generates substantial revenues from the defendant's campaigns against plaintiffs. Not illegal. That's not actually... There's no claim there. Uh, you didn't state a claim. Defendant Weber Shandwick and Asterios Coconos. This is one of my favorite sections. Uh, Asterios, buddy, unblock me, you dumb idiot. God, you're, you're such a cunt. Uh, for blocking me. Anyway, um, whatever. Still love you, buddy, even though you're fat and dumb. Defendant Asterios Kokonos is a proud Weber Shandwick employee. He's proud. He's never mentioned it on the show, uh, but that, he's proud of it. And Defendant Herrera's co-conspirator. <laughs> co conspirator Defendant Weber Shandwick uh, is a large public relations firm in Manhattan, uh, and Asterios has worked for them on many campaigns, including Hellman's Mayonnaise and the United Women's Group Campaign. United Nations Women's Group Campaign. Asterios. You're the, you're the most beautiful cuck I've ever seen. It's, it's really sad. Weber Shandwick has hosted an annual event called Civility in America, which is supposed to be about their company working towards making America more civil. That's great. Uh... This response stands in the face of public representation. What response? Oh, they have a top of the trolls campaign? I don't know. This response stands in the face of public presentation representations made by Weber Shanwick rel relative to civility and trolling and the hundreds of thousands of dollars their clients spend on their so-called social media crisis simulator. What response? You have a, a syntax problem. You haven't laid foundation for the response. What, what the hell is the response? For instance... In a story done by ABC News, a Weber Shanwick executive discusses how anonymity of trolls makes them so hard to fight. You're literally calling out these trolls who operate like Asterios operates under his own name. 
His own name is Stereos Kokonos. It's not an anonymous troll. Likewise, Weber Shanwick has done research and even made a statement on why the general counsel for a company needs a more prominent role in avoiding social media crises. Okay. Weber Shanwick has even, even has their own definition of internet trolls. Importantly, their own definition is not a legal definition under any statute in New York City, so it doesn't matter. People who deliberately post argumentative or proactive content. Asterios, you do this. You do this, you liberal pile of garbage. The foregoing demonstrates some of the argumentative or proactive content that one of their... You haven't posted th the foregoing. You haven't posted a single thing by Asterios that is argumentative or proactive content. And even so, argumentative and proactive content isn't legal. And neither is hypocrisy. It's not illegal for this company to uphold one virtue in public and then to hold another virtue in private. That's okay. Companies do this all the time. See Hollywood and the bunch of rapists that they are. One of their senior copywriters created and posted in which their general counsel was notified of but did nothing about. So... Coconos has assisted the, the dick show in all aspects of its campaigns Again, these, these campaigns. He created his own brand and subsidiary business from said campaigns and harassment. During all times herein asserted, Defendant Kokonos was an agent and senior copywriter at Weber Shanwick. Okay. Kokonos celebrated the use of the company's equipment and technology in a variety of capacities in furtherance of the defendant's targeted harassment campaigns against plaintiffs. By the way, you haven't established that they're targeted harassment campaigns. You haven't even laid out a campaign. And all of your accusations prior to this are largely leveled at Dick, not Asterios. In fact, Defendant Kokonos made several despicable podcast recordings at Weber Shanwick's office using their equipment technology and studios, including four comedy album he made, which he used to harass plaintiffs. Why do you have an apostrophe after plaintiffs? Learn the English. Live streams he recorded and broadcast at Weber Shanwick offices during work hours. Was he paid for them? And even if he was, who cares? That's up to Weber Shanwick. On or about February 22nd, 2017, an individual named Heather contacted various executives of Weber, Weber Shanwick by email in regards to a journalism piece she was doing about online trolls, bullying, and harassment. Where's the piece, Maddox? Uh, do you have... Do you have the piece anywhere? That would be great. Oh my god. Let me see if I can find this. Oh, are you basically, are you saying that maybe Heather lied about being a journalist? Uh, okay. So, sorry, very unprofessional. Uh, Heather stated as follows in this email. One of your writers, Mysterios Kokonos, is taking part in an online harassment and bullying campaign targeting individuals. We were informed by a women's comedy group in Los Angeles. He records some of his segments after hours at Weber Shandwick and works with a person named Dick Masterson who runs a web website titled Men Are Better Than Women and has written misogynistic statements such as this. A guy who fucks a drunk girl who passed out in his bed isn't a rapist. He's just a dick. Get over it. Let's see. This is written on a satire website. But yeah, he wrote it. Good job. These two collaborate frequently, and they seem to be targeting women online for harassment, as well as former colleagues. And then you link to Dick's Twitter account. Hey, Maddox, buddy. Dick has been suspended from Twitter. All of these links are useless. You need to provide screenshots. Asterios uses alt-right phraseology like cuck <laughs> and released an entire album of cuck songs. I don't even know Asterios and he's the farthest person from alt-right that I can imagine. He's the most liberal cunt I've seen online in a long time. A serial is nothing but love for you, buddy. This is just comedy. How dare you on Reddit say fuck off, cuck? <laughs> 
I'd like to ask a few questions. Are you aware of your employees, contractors taking part in online harassment campaigns such as this? If you were aware of your employees, contractors, online bullying, to what extent? Do you condone company property being used to create this content? Paragraph 65. On February 23rd, the general counsel of Weber at Stanwick. <laughs> Shanwick. Holy shit. Hold on, I got a drink. Every time something's super retarded, I've got a drink. And if I would have been drinking more if I hadn't already drank a bunch. Sorry. Joshua Kaufman responded to this email and stated, In pertinent part, include the whole email, you fucking coward. I'm general counsel for constituency management group, which includes Weber Shandwick. Your email was forwarded to me. We take these matters very seriously. Here's a hint. That means they don't take it seriously because you're stupid. If you provide me with your complete contact details, I would be happy to speak with you. On February 25th, Heather replied to Mr. Kaufman and requested a statement in regard to online bullying and harassment. A statement was not forthcoming, however. Mr. Kaufman replied on February 27th, 2017. By the way, this guy is re responding in a timely manner. I absolutely would take weeks to respond to this idiot. Weber Shanway took these matters seriously and needed to verify the identity of any reporter before making a statement on the record and that AT&T was not a client. By the way, if you want to uh, point out that AT&T is a client, you should include that in the former email uh, or in the details of the email from Heather. It just looks out of content and or out of context and unprofessional here. Uh... Here's the thing. Did Heather provide press credentials? I bet not, because Heather's not a reporter, right? So here's what she said. Thank you for getting back to me. Here are a few considerations. We are approaching this differently because several of our journalists have received credible threats. You're talking to the general counsel of a multinational PR firm. You're not talking to Asterios. You're not worried about him doxing you, you dumb cunt. Have received credible threats, private information leaks, and harassment. We are trying to protect the identity of those involved, including myself. If you're claiming to be a member of the press and invoking the protections and privileges thereof, you need to provide your credentials as a member of the press. Maddox, it sure looks like you're lying under oath in this document. I don't know if that's true. Something to consider. We are interested in seeing if companies who support these individuals financially will hold them accountable. Thank you for the information about AT&T. They are a brand that has worked with Asterios in the past. We're reaching out to companies who support these individuals financially. Are you, are you admitting to attempting to interfere with lawful employment? Because what you're doing and what Heather's doing here might actually be a crime. Hmm. Like, like it might be illegal in the state of, uh, in the state of New York. It's called a uh, tortious interference with contract. So, um, tortiously interfering with a contract, if they can show a financial gain for Heather, that's a crime. And you may have implicated her in this statement. AT&T and its, or its subsidiaries has contracted worth work with CMG IGC. Apologies if Weber Shanwick was not directly involved. If you would be willing to provide a current list of campaigns and companies Asterios has worked with, yeah, he's going to do that, you idiot. We'd love to reach out to them for comment. If you are unwilling to give a statement due to the relative an anonymity of this piece, relative anonymity, it's fully anonymous. You haven't provided any press, press credentials. That is understandable. As I am not just a journalist, but an activist. Oh, yeah. You're fucking credible. My goal is to see if companies will hold them accountable once they... Uh, pff, holy shit. Once they know about the illicit activities of their employees. To be clear, Asterios Coconuts works with a writer named Dax Herrera who goes by the pseudonym Ma Dick Masterson of the website Men Are Better Than Women. There are countless articles about rape on the website. Here are some quotes. And then he has... Uh, she has a bunch of quotes. Uh, let, let me read these because these are these are good job, Dick. A guy who fucks a drunk girl who passed out in a, in his in his bed isn't a rapist. He's just a dick. Get over it. Okay. Being a victim of date rape is like being a victim of getting a flat tire when you drive off a cliff. You did it. It's your fault. You're lying about how it happened. If women really hate rape so much, then why is the first argument they always haphazardly spit out of their mouths? Without women, none of you men would even be here. 
Without rape, none of you twits would be here either. <laughs> okay. Hashtag satire, you idiots. Women are whores and they know they're whores. And sexual harassment lawsuits are the proof. Getting hit on or having your ass grabbed is not a big deal. Even if you are reluctant to give a statement, I implore you to Google Asterios Kokonos and Dick Masterson and see what your employee is up to. You should be aware of the misogynistic nature of who you are employing, and employing period. Five minutes of Googling will yield this information. And then you, you link to Twitter again. You. Oh, in fairness, this was in an email. And uh, his Twitter wasn't banned yet. Weber Shanwick took no action against Coconos following this exchange, which clearly notified of, them the, of, of the activities that their senior copywriters was engaged in. One of their senior and copywriters was engaged in against plaintiffs. Yeah, that's uh, that's not illegal to not take action. Subsequently, defendant Kokonos made a post on Dick Show Reddit page where he acknowledged that Weber Shanwick acknowledged what he was doing and that he had been contacted about it at least three times. You're admitting to tortious interference with contract. God, I hope you go to. I hope you get a ticket. I hope you do. I know you won't, but I wish you would. Defendant Kokonos also indicated in this Reddit post that if plaintiff did not apologize to him, that he would exert ruthless <laughs> revenge upon him. Even referring to plaintiff directly, here's the post. Oregon devote a fucking month of my life to hiring artists, finding a publisher that will successfully chart on the New York Times bestseller list, writing a book called Classic Cuckmas Tales, and putting it out there for spite. Balls in your court, George. That isn't illegal, and that's not ruthless revenge. He's offering... He's threatening to write a book for personal gain. Oh. Defendant Kokonos then subsequently updated his post and offered incentives to his and Defendant Dick's followers to help publish a book defaming and harassing plaintiffs. Have it public... Defamement, defamation and harassment are legal conclusions. Have it published on the same day as plaintiff's own book to interfere with its success. Here's this. Here's a post by Asterios. Oh shit, this is a really fucking funny idea. I'm going to do this ASAP. Edit. Okay, publishing a book costs money and takes about a month. I'll make a deal with this subreddit. If, the com if this comment gets 100 upvotes, I will publish an illustrated children's book of classic Cuckman's Tales and release it on the same day as Maddox's book, purely out of spite. Nothing illegal here, Maddox. Update, 12.29 a.m. Okay, we're doing this. Right now, the biggest thing we need is a publishing service that will chart on the New York Times bestseller list. I'm guessing Create Space because of its affiliation with Amazon. But can someone help me find out? There have to be stories out there uh, of people charting out of nowhere. Publishing a book is expensive as hell. I put out a book for Patreon supporters, and it costs quite a bit per copy. So now, uh, so I'm going to take the advice of Maddox Lost, Maddox Lost, and Robotier, uh... And introducing a new $5 reward on Patreon to fund this insane endeavor. A $5 pledge, seminal, <laughs> seminal cuckmate classic. Cuckmas classic. Visit patreon.com slash serials for deets. Finally, if you want to pitch a story of your, or your art, leave it in the comments. We have a lot of great cucksmas carols come from the last thread. Let's make this book the biggest, greatest tome in the history of cuckmas. None of that is illegal. And it doesn't interfere with the, the success of your book. In fact, it doesn't even allege interference with the success of your book. He's just going to publish it on the same day, which is fine. People can publish a book anytime they want, you dummy. In other posts, Defendant Weber Shanwick offices during work. Defendant Kokonos brags about buying targeted ads to get around plaintiff's block. Who cares? Who cares? Uh, Weber Shanwick should have immediately conducted... What Weber Shanwick should and should have done is irrelevant, and you don't know what they did. They should have put a stop to Asterios' conduct? Why? It's not illegal. And if they're okay with it, because of your unsubstantiated claims from a non-journalist, they don't have to do anything. Weber Shanwick's hypocrisy is troubling. Troubling hypocrisy isn't a legal claim. You dummy. It shouldn't even be in your complaint. It's not a fact, by the way, that they have troubling hypocrisy. Defendant Kokonos has also created false advertising campaigns against plaintiff J Maddox on the popular social media platform Reddit to fraudulently misrepresent plaintiff's brand called Madcast Fan Statement. Provide evidence. He paid for this advertisement on Reddit and fraudulently claimed to represent 
plaintiff Maddox and his fans. This was reported to Reddit and found to be in violation of their terms of service. Oh, man. A serious, do you have life support? How are you going to recover from that? Defendant Kokonos made online posts boasting about this false and fraudulent advertising campaign on uh, Dick's official fan forum on Reddit, requesting his followers to help fund the endeavor and offering incentives, incentives there too. See URL, you can't fight spite George. <laughs> In this post, Defendant Kokonos breaks down how much it would cost to target plaintiff's fans on Facebook through his targeted advertising. Targeted advertising is okay to do. It's not illegal. Even if it's in spite of you, that's okay. This isn't a claim. Not a legal claim. Coconuts made a comedy album using Weber Shanwick's equipment and distributed phys physical copies. That's not illegal. That's not illegal. In the physical copies, Coconuts disseminated. He included a phone number claiming that it was plaintiff Jane Doe's. It's 8675309. God damn it, Maddox. Chapter Paragraph 80. <sighs> Hold on. I'm not drunk enough for this. Defendant Kokonos participated, created, and incited many of the campaigns, comma, against plaintiffs during work hours, comma, or after work, comma, from Sh Weber Shanwick's office, comma, often using Weber Shanwick's equipment. You need, like, less than half of those commas. Jesus Christ. Fire your lawyer. Hire me. I would have sued Dick. Dick, hire me first. As a senior copywriter, Defendant Kokonos is required to submit billable hours for the work he does on behalf of an account. One, how do you know? And two, so what? One of Defendant Kokonos's jobs as a senior copywriter is to write comical content for a particular account or company's website. Okay. As demonstrated by the foregoing, this is not, you haven't demonstrated anything, but what, what are you even going to say? The breadth and extent of defendants Herrera and Coconos' incitement and harassment campaigns was extraordinary in scope. He provided like 10 examples, and they're not even good ones. Defendants Herrera and Coconos have created a lucrative business by appealing to the lowest characters in our society. Not illegal, by the way. Are we a basket of deplorables? And have spent thousands of hours in furtherance of them. So what? So what? You can, you can actually do a targeted business model to murderers and rapists. Maddox, that's okay. Or genocidal ma maniacs. You can targeted advertise to Kim Jong-un, for example. Like, that's okay. That's okay. It's not a good business model, but it's okay. Therefore, when Defendant Kokonos was supposed to be working on an account for Weber Shanwick, he was instead working and involved. How do you know what he was doing on his time on and time off? Even if he was zeroing work hours, you're, you're alleging that he billed someone inappropriately? You better substantiate that. You need timestamps, buddy. Uh, and, and records of the invoices. Um... On a daily basis, using the company's offices, equipment, and technology, and billing their clients for such work and time. Provide proof that he did that. Like, that's a massive allegation. You better have a fucking date. By the way, again, shout out to my law dickheads. Uh, if you go back to Iqbal and the rules of civil procedure, like if you're going to allege a conspiracy or allege criminal acts, you need facts to support it. You need dates. You need times. You need the amounts. You need the people involved. Uh, I think this is... Um, God, what was the fucking case? Uh, it was a precursor... Was it Was it Bell? Southwestern Bell? Okay, this is a conspiracy case, and you're going to have to forgive me because I'm drinking way too much to remember. But basically, uh, the allegation was that phone companies conspired to keep business... Um, monopolies in certain markets we all know that they do this by the way they, they definitely do this but the allegation was that there was a an actual conspiracy to do so but the allegation uh failed to assert any dates times conversations or communications that would lay out this conspiracy and without those you haven't stated a claim you've simply stated a legal conclusion here You've stated a legal conclusion against the stereos, but you haven't laid out any facts that lead to that conclusion. Dismissed. 
Accordingly, Defendant Kokonos has been receiving salary and compensation from Weber Shamwick for creating his vitriolic content against plaintiffs. Uh, you don't know that he's received any compensation for the time he spent making anything, even if he used Weber Shanwick uh, materials. If he doesn't bill for the hours that he's involved in this out-of-work project, which you have presented no evidence of, then he hasn't actually received compensation for it. Like most public companies, Weber Shanwick most likely keeps detailed time and accounting records. Uh, yeah, they, they probably do. Have you produced any of them? Weber Shanwick has paid substantial sums of money from some of the largest and most reputable companies to prevent the very thing that defendant Kokonos incited from Weber Shanwick's headquarters. Well, that's, that's just a whole bunch of conjecture right here. You don't have any of these conclusions proven. How is that for irony? Rhetorical questions don't belong in a complaint. Uh, hat tip to Raphael Gallagher, uh, who pointed that out. But, I mean, for fuck's sake, that's embarrassing. How is that for irony? The irony is that purportedly a lawyer wrote this. Um, I don't know if that's ironic. Let's ask Alanis Morissette. But it's a damn shame, either way. Upon receipt of the information, rather than the company taking internal action, it supported or at very least condoned. No, you don't have any evidence that it supported or condoned. You have evidence that it ignored Asterios Kokonos' behavior. Uh, by informing its employee who then doubled down on his crusade against the plaintiffs. Telling him that they've received inquiries is not either a support or a con condoning of his activities. It's merely refusal to act. Refusal to act is an almost never a cause of action in court. Again, you don't have a claim. It's apparent that Weber Shanwick notified Kokonos of the complaint. Since after the general counsel was made aware, he wasted little time in demanding an apology from the plaintiff. Uh, and then when it was not received, he increased the disgusting conduct illustrated herein. Why didn't you apologize? You contacted his employer and tried to get him fired, which, by the way, might be illegal. Uh... Even if it's not, it's a dick move. You're, you're a boring cunt. Apologize. At the time of filing this complaint, defendants Herrera and Coconuts continue to create and incite. They have not incited any sexual harassment or racist campaigns against plaintiff Jane Doe. You haven't. You've had ample opportunity to provide evidence in your bad, horrific way of doing so. And you haven't done it, which means you haven't found it, which means it isn't there. And if it is there and you haven't found it, fire your attorney. They encourage their followers to send racial slurs. Post one thing encouraging any of this. Death threats and rape threats. Jane Doe continues to receive numerous threats and messages on Twitter. That's probably true. Because she interjected herself into the conflict between you and Dick. She chose to jump into a stream of vitriol back and forth between you two. She entered into it. That was her choice. And she got a bunch of hate for it. She also got a lot of support from your dumb fans, right? If she didn't, why not? Your fans are stupid. For instance, plaintiff Jane Doe posted a YouTube video in response, got bombarded with rape threats from defendant's fans. So, one, you haven't substantiated that any of these people are defendant's fans. None of them are uh, on the Facebook group that I can recognize. So you have to provide evidence that they're Dick's fans. And even so, uh, them all saying get raped uh, isn't a rape threat. It's not a threat. The only one that's close to a threat is Anna, the evil bitch of death, posts, I will be visiting you in your nightmares with rape. Not a threat because it's in nightmares, which is not in a physical state, but in a metaphysical state. Oh, Jesus Christ. Paragraph 92. I don't have enough scotch, guys. Defendant Kokonos' Patreon page has 463 patrons who pay him twenty-one sixty-five a month. Good job, Asterios. Based on continuing to participate and perpetuate his reprehensible campaigns against plaintiffs. You have an apostrophe after the period. What the fuck is wrong with your attorney? Every aspect of plaintiffs' personal and professional lives have and continue to be disrupted by the defendant's acts. Every aspect. Dinner? Are they disrupting your dinner? Plaintiffs constantly live in a state of fear. Of what? And have endured an unthinkable amount of suffering. Mind you, uh, Jews were rounded up, gassed, and killed, and buried, and starved. 
um, Ukrainians in the Holodomor were uh, starved to death and buried in mass graves. Um, I mean, uh, in, in, in Africa, children are forced to kill their own parents. But you have endured an unthinkable amount of suffering, you pretentious pile of shit. Oh, on to, on to, this is going to be the best section. Defendant Trevor Burt or Mad Cucks. My second glass of scotch is gone. If I have a third glass. Oh, ooh. That would have been, that wouldn't have worked, y'all. Maddox, the amount of scotch I have drank tonight is more than your Patreon on the average week. That's a shame, buddy. Defendant Trevor Burt, or Mad Cucks. Defendant Burt created a character called Mad Cucks. He created a character called Mad Cucks. With defendants Herrera and Kokonos. Did he? Did he... In conjunction with Herrera and Coconuts, I'm pretty sure he created it on his own and submitted it to them. Based on an appallingly developmentally disabled caricature of Maddox. Uh, no, actually not. It's based on how you read fan mail, you idiot, with your air of superiority. The appallingly developmentally, developmentally disabled caricature is how you characterize your own fans on probably... Uh, 20 plus occasions on the biggest problem in public you dumb idiot Whew. I should probably stop drinking at some point but uh, this is worth it defendant Burt regularly appears on the defendant's podcast and throughout their other social media platforms as a developmentally disabled individual does he? I don't think he's ever claimed to be developmentally disabled. Um, that's uh, That may be offensive. Who defendants Herrera and Coconos make fun of as a parody of plaintiff. Defendants promote mad cucks and market his contents to their followers. Okay. See URL where Coconos and Herrera are promoting Brit Mad Cucks' album and defaming plaintiff. Uh, I don't think think they're defaming plaintiff in any way they're promoting promoting the album isn't defamation again you've just gone ahead and stated a legal conclusion of defamation without providing any evidence of it um and oh my god are you fucking kidding me the post you linked is from mad cucks you Dumb, dumb person. Bert or Mad Cucks always appears as a slovenly dressed, slow, dim-witted individual with a speech impediment common to people with Down syndrome and characteristics of a person with disabilities. So what? Who fucking cares? He can do that. That's not illegal. Like other defendants, defendant Bert has created a business around his defaming. It's not defamation. He hasn't defamed you. He hasn't maliciously lied about you. And harassing plaintiff. Where has Mad Cucks harassed you? Has he gone after you specifically? Has he targeted you? Has he contacted you in any way? Creating content and indicting his fans. Where's the incitement, you fucking coward? You've posted a bunch of bullshit screenshots throughout this whole thing. And not a goddamn one of them includes incitement. Mad Cucks created his own websites, that's legal, and albums, also legal, which can be purchased on iTunes, that should be illegal, Google Play, and he has his own Patreon page, <gasps> containing 164 Patreons who are paying him 308 per month. Mad Cucks, buddy, get more patrons. You deserve it. You're funny. One of Mad Cucks' album is entitled Mad Cucks vs. Existence, which is a play on plaintiff's own website. No, it isn't. Like, is Maddox versus the universe your website? No. No, you have biggest debate in the universe. You had a biggest problem in the universe along with Dick in a partnership, by the way. 
you know, you don't get to claim sole ownership of that. And you have the, the, the best website in the universe. Mad Cucks versus Existence isn't a play on your own website or show. Uh, likewise, Mad Cucks purported record label is Mad Cucks Media, which is a parody on plaintiff's platform, Madcast Media. No, you can actually call your uh, business whatever the fuck you want as long as it's not the same as someone else. It can be off by a goddamn letter, you dumb idiot. Further, Mad Cucks has a Twitter account with over 4,555 followers. If, is it over 4,555 followers? Is that 4,556? And a YouTube station with over... Station. It's a channel. YouTube has channels, not stations. Jesus Christ. With over 1,800 subscribers. You didn't state a claim against Mad Cucks. You didn't state any claims. What the fuck is wrong with you? Kiwi Farms. On the website Kiwi Farms, there's a forum where defendant Herrera and Coconos' fans stalk, docs, make false claims, and boast about the harassment of plaintiffs. Why do you have an apostrophe on plaintiffs? What the fuck is wrong with you? And post private information about them. Defendant Coconos has personally posted to Kiwi Farms and contributed to the harassment against plaintiffs there. Why didn't you include the post? By the way, it, it, and it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It's okay. It's legal to do this. Defendant Herrera had the administrator and or owner of Kiwi Farms on his show. So what? If plaintiff Jane Doe's name is Googled in conjunction with plaintiff uh, Maddox, who show defendants, why is there an apostrophe? The fuck is wrong with you? Why don't you have English? And their followers using Jane Doe's apostrophe. The apostrophe goes between the E and the S. Pictures and alleging that she has sexually transmitted diseases. Does she? Does she? If it's true, it's not defamation. And if it's not true, it's still not defamation. Notwithstanding the foregoing, and even though he was clearly aware of the threats, harassment, and appalling actions and conduct of defendants and their fans on Kiwi Farms, the owner of Kiwi Farms still appeared and participated on the podcast. The aforementioned content has not been removed as of this complaint's filing. It doesn't have to. It's not illegal. And you failed to fucking cite a claim. Fuck whales. Defendants' latest campaign... Against plaintiffs, why is there an apostrophe? God damn it! Is to destroy the book that plaintiff George Maddox just came out with on or about October 15th entitled Fuck Whales. You can't destroy a book, like, unless they're book burning them. Even if you say you shouldn't buy this book, you can't prevent people from buying the book. On or about October 19th, 2017. Defendant Herrera personally and directly instructed his fans to leave negative reviews. Did he really? Did he really? Uh, he did this in an IRC, a communication platform where he regularly chats and coordinates attacks with around 70 of his fans. Defendant Herrera's alias on IRC is Peen Wienerstein. One, fucking prove it. Two, let's go through this. Peen Wienerstein, DM me your most believable two-star review for Fuck Whales. Uh... Elvin Monk says, Peen Wienerstein, why do you want a two-star review? Two-star disappointment hurts more than one-star hatred. Ah, I see. Lol. It's expensive and doesn't taste very good. It's bad, like bad steak mixed with bad fish. Two stars. He asked them to private message them a review. Or private message him a review. Immediately following this directive, one of Defendant Herrera's fans posted the following review. One, how do you know this is one of his fans? I'm an unverified reviewer since I didn't buy the book. Uh, actually, he doesn't reference being a fan at all. He references being a fan of you. You didn't prove anything. You don't... David H., we don't even know who this is. Paragraph 109. Defendant Herrera tweeted this false negative review to his other fans. Um, one, it's not a false negative review. It's a negative review. He boasted about his harassment and defamation of plaintiff's books. He hasn't harassed or defamed your book. That's not even possible. 
He's continued to encourage his fans to follow suit to destroy plaintiff books and the sales there too. You cited to his Twitter page, which is suspended indefinitely. You fucking dummy. Why didn't you post a screenshot? Defendant Foundation Digital. Defendant Herrera is the co-founder of Foundation Digital. He's used the knowledge and understanding of SEO and the technology, equipment, and servers of Foundation Digital in the foregoing campaigns against plaintiffs. So, uh, defendant uses employees of Foundation Digital to help with his campaigns against plaintiffs. How? To incite fans and to create content there too. Prove it. Other co-owners and executives of Foundation Digital appeared on his podcast. So, and have actively promoted and marketed it. And you're clearly aware of his actions and conduct against plaintiffs. That doesn't mean that they endorse the conduct against the plaintiffs. Again, you have to have a specific allegation, not a passive allegation. Profited from it. How do you know that they profited from it? Do they have Patreons? And allowed Defendant Herrera to continue his vitriol, oftentimes with the blessing and support of employees, executive, and owners of Defendant Foundation Digital. So, again, passive acceptance of these things even affirmative support does not amount to criminal activity or unlawful activity for civil matters. Many of the commercial activities that Foundation Digital designs for his companies have been used by Defendant Herrera in his activities. How do you know? Uh, like, you're, you're claiming that Foundation Digital has commercial activities opposed to you? That's a thick claim. Um, support that, please. But what if you're if what you're saying is Dick used his knowledge of SEO to run these campaigns, so what? That doesn't implicate Foundation Digital. Foundation Digital has not stopped Herrera's conduct. You can't claim that a failure to prevent is tantamount to an endorsement or an encouragement or a, pr a proponent of of certain behavior. Failure to condemn behavior is not actionable in a court of law. Foundation Digital conducts business mainly in California and New York. Prominent clients such as ESPN and Disney. Campaigns and contents created by Foundation Digital for these types of clients and the information and other materials used therein is kept on the same servers and content. Like keeping stuff on the same servers isn't implicating them in anything. Okay, finally. We're at the first cause of action. I apologize if I'm off frame. I'm really drunk and I stopped paying attention to where the camera was a long time ago. Invasion of privacy and for injunctive relief pursuant to civil rights law section 50 and 51. Against defendants Herrera, Coconos, Burt, Foundation Digital, Bozer, and Baker. Hold on, I'm skimming through this real quick to find out. Oh, there's a defamation, a libel per se, and slander per se. This should be good. Okay. So the first one. I'm sorry, this is getting long. Getting long. It's fucking an hour and a half. We're going to have to cut it, but I'm not going to because I'm lazy. Paragraph 117. Plaintiffs repeat, replete, and incorporate by reference each and every allegation of one... Through 116. I don't know why anyone does this in a lawsuit. Like, it's obvious that your statement of facts is incorporated into your cause of action. 118. Defendants use plaintiff's name, photograph, picture, portrait, and or likeness without their written consent within the state of New York for the purposes of advertising or trade. Okay. Where? You haven't provided a single advertisement disseminated specifically in New York for the purpose of advertising or trade in which Maddox is likeness is used you've only provided one instance in which his likeness is arguably used and that was a chicago road rage in la you fucking dummy 119 defendant's use of plaintiff's name photographs picture portrait or likeness was was a use in or as part of an advertisement or solicitation for patronage prove that it was in new york and not only that it occurred in new york that it was targeted and advertised and availed of the protections of New York law. You can't because it was done in LA. Both the billboard and the flyer for the LA road rage were in LA. As set forth more fully above defendants, entire business is based around the harassment campaigns. They can be, they can be, you haven't proved the harassment campaigns are unlawful and you can support a business however you want. Uh, let's see. Most lucrative use of plaintiff's name, photograph, picture, portrait, or inner likeness. Okay, guys, I'm going to let me let me get legal on you here, and I apologize for this. God damn it. Oh. Um, 
Okay. Okay. I'm a lawyer. I have access to Westlaw, which I pay an ungodly amount for. Let me go ahead and read you this, this decision. This is from 2008, Davis versus Stratton in uh, the state of New York. Under New York law, terms of statute regulating use of name, portrait, or picture of another for purposes of trade without first having obtained written consent must be construed narrowly and not used to curtail the right of free speech, which means that they can only construe this, uh, this statute. The statute has to be construed only for the purposes of advertisement and profit. You can't just state that Dick used his your your name and pictures and likenesses in his podcast. That's legal. That's protected speech. The only thing would be if in a specific advertisement he used your name and likeness without permission and in excess of his already robust rights of free speech. But anyway, let's see. Uh, the basis of their shows, the content they're in. Defendant Dick's podcast on Patreon has generated over 20000 a month based on this model. Likewise, Defendant Coconut's podcast made over 2000 per month. And Defendant Burt made over another over 500 as a monthly average. Uh, Mad Cucks, I'm sure you'd be happy to know that you made more than $500 a month on Patreon. In addition, defendants specifically use plaintiff's name, photographs, pictures, portraits in advertising and selling albums on iTunes, Google Play, and Amazon. Why don't you have uh, t-shirts on their websites, books, and have created YouTube stations, its channels, websites, social media campaigns, and other content and advertising campaigns around the destructive and perverted use of plaintiff's names, blah, blah, blah. Further, defendants have gone on tour, created flyers, and other... None of this happened in New York. Not a single goddamn instance you've mentioned happened in New York. Why the fuck are you suing in New York? Sue in California. Even so, even so, you haven't substantiated any of these claims. As demonstrated above, it wasn't demonstrated. Defendants use plaintiff's name, blah, 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 to solicit and promote their business to tens of thousands of listeners, fans, consumers on a variety of formats and popular digital platforms, blah, 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 blah. Did they do it in New York? It only matters if they did it in New York. Targeted New York, not incidentally in New York. Defendants publish and republish plaintiff's name, photograph, and her likeness in multiple formats, including their own promotions and advertisements, websites, social media, and platforms. The only ones that matter are advertisements in New York City because you're filing in New York under state law for some dumb reason. Defendants' use of plaintiff's names, blah, 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 is clearly a recognizable likeness of the plaintiffs and is readily identifiable by someone familiar with them. So what? As demonstrated by the foregoing, there is a direct and substantial connection between the appearance of plaintiff's names and likenesses. Okay, let me go through one other thing. This is issued as a right of privacy, but the court in New York, the Supreme Court of New York, has determined that this should more appropriately be called a right of publicity not a right of privacy. So they're talking about invading the privacy of Maddox, but the statutes are actually created to prevent the unjust promotion of another person, not the diminishing of another person. So even if we take this at face value and say that Maddox is right and that Dick is diminishing him through these online campaigns, that's okay under the statute. This is fucking bad. Defendants' actions grossly invaded their privacy, so what? And violated the civil rights statutes in egregious and unconscionable ways, which included publishing plaintiffs' private information. What private information? Phone numbers and address. Why didn't you include that in the lawsuit? They didn't publish your phone numbers or address. And by the way, your address is public record, you dummy. Anybody can find it with about 10 minutes of work. And inciting their fans to invade their privacy. You provided no evidence for any th any of this. Foundation Digital encourages and allows Dax Herrera to prove that they encourage any of this. Allowing, them, allowing him to use their servers is legal. He's a co-founder. He can do whatever the fuck he wants. 
Further, Foundation Digital's employees have assisted with Herrera's podcast. Not illegal. If you even appeared on the show. Not illegal. And promoted on their social media. Not illegal. None of this is illegal. They can do this all day. They haven't done anything to you. Defendant Foundation Digital, therefore, has used plaintiff's name, photograph, image, and her likeness. No, it hasn't. Foundation Digital hasn't used any of this. At best, the dick show has. At best, the dick show has. Maybe. On its own, Defendant Foundation Digital's storage of all appalling and reprehensible content indication above and created by Defendant Herrera is a gross invasion of plaintiff's privacy. Citation fucking needed. Like, prove any of this. Plaintiff's lives have been disrupted by defendant's actions and have consequently consequently suffered severe mental anguish, emotional distress, and extreme humiliation. Now, I'm not familiar with New York law enough to know this, but in Minnesota, for example, uh, you have to provide bills, doctor bills, to prove this. Plaintiff Jane Doe has been diagnosed with depression, anxiety, PTSD. Probably because she is dating you more than any of this. Plaintiff Maddox has lost fans. Yeah, he did that on his own. A significant amount of income. That was fucking stupid. And sponsors. Also stupid. And sustained considerable injury to his professional image. You, Your professional image is someone who's a, an online bully. Literally, you set yourself up as an online bully. Which I thought was very funny. Until you backtracked it. You ruined your professional image, you idiot. And your new book is garbage. Defendant's conduct was appalling, wanton, and unconscionable. Un- unconscionable. None of that is illegal. In deliberate disregard of plaintiff's rights, rights. What right? What right? Defendants collectively and each of them individually by engaging in the aforementioned acts or in authorizing or ratifying such acts engaged in willful, malicious, intentional, oppressive, and despicable content and acted with willful and conscious disregard of the rights, safety, and welfare of plaintiffs, thereby justifying the award of punitive and exemplary damages. Wherefore, plaintiffs respect... Okay, so here's the prayer for relief in a lawsuit. This is where you ask for something from the court. Actual and compensatory damages in an amount in excess of $20 million. What the fuck are you thinking? Where would you get this number? You can maybe show. Mind you, you're suing in New York. And I I don't know the emotional distress law in New York. But I'm guessing it's limited to actual economic loss. You have to show $20 million of loss, you dumb cunt. This is a bad move. You shouldn't list... Oh, my God. Statutory attorney's fees. You should just say in excess of $75,000, by the way. And let the court determine the damages. Because in excess of $20 million sure looks thirsty. Statutory attorney's fees. Uh, You haven't provided the statute. By the way, typically when you're requesting attorney's fees in a complaint... You have to provide uh, not only the statute authorizing the release of attorney's fees, but you have to provide a memorandum of law in support of it. And and that's apparently not included here. So you're going to fail on that. The court issue an injunction in joining defendants from featuring, distributing, or using plaintiff's name. They don't use it uh, in any advertisement. And the court can't enjoin them from using it on social media and websites because that's not advertisement. Any and all, the the court can't do this because it would be illegal. It would be a violation of Dick's free speech, you dummy. Any and all of the Defendant Foundation Digital's equipment, technology, and computers uh, be enjoined, placed under a protective court order, and immediately taken offline. Uh, They're not going to take offline uh, Foundation Digital servers. Like, that's nonsense. That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Second cause of action, defamation, libel per se, and slander per se against Dick, uh, Kokonos, Burt, and Foundation Digital. Do they have a third cause of action? Oh, they do. Um, Oh, they have several. Here's the funny thing. I'm going to go ahead and tell you. um, Jesus Christ. Oh, my God. They have, like, 13 causes of action. This is... This is retarded. This is going to be a two-hour video. I'm I'm sorry, guys. 
I'm gonna try and speed this up. This is this is embarrassing for them, not for me. I'm I'm legitimately great. Uh, Coconos, D Dick, and Bert published written and oral defamatory statements of fact concerning where, on numerous occasions, as demonstrated above, you didn't demonstrate any defamatory statements. You certainly didn't demonstrate any oral defamatory ones. Said statements consist of associating plaintiffs with numerous appalling and false things and for advocating and for encouraging their fans or followers that ha uh, vile things such as having sexually transmitted diseases. That's a little offensive to people with STDs. Encouraging and advocating for rape. Did you not have C is for copying a feel in your book? That's literally all anyone said. Uh, defendants published said statements to a third party, as indicated above, blah, blah, blah. Fault in publishing the defamatory statements against plaintiffs consisted of at least negligence. Um, you need to, yeah, uh, okay. Said statements were published with wantonness and extreme malice. Um, again, not only do they have to be uh, malicely published, they have to be maliciously published with the intent to deprive you of something. Uh, which, one, you can't show, and two... They have to be false. You say they're false, but they're not. None of the statements you listed are false things. The statements published by defendants were defamatory and exposed plaintiffs to public uh, blah, blah, blah. Okay. By the way, you did this. You actually did this in your stupid rape list video in which you literally defamed dick masterson you literally did this the only reason he hasn't sued you on it is because it's so goddamn hard to sue a person a public figure on this type of stuff challenge statements or publications have false and defamatory meaning no tend to disparage plaintiffs in their profession or straight trade no they don't uh, there's no disparagement these are things you did own up to it Plaintiff is also entitled to punitive damages because libelous statements were published with actual malice. Actually, no, you're not. Because as a public figure, which requires an actual malice standard, like you can't claim punitive damage uh, based on the standard. You'd have to go beyond the standard, which is hard to do as a public figure. Plaintiffs have suffered mental anguish, blah, blah, blah. Prove it. Uh, further, both plaintiffs have sustained injury to their professional image, brand, and marketability. You're literally calling yourself public figures and making this harder, you fucking dummies. Defendants publish the libelous and slanderous statements in wanton, deliberate disregards of your rights, blah, blah, blah. This is fucking boring. Um, yeah, okay, cause three. They They claim that they ask for the same thing. $20 million which is and exemplary and punitive damages in an amount in excess of $20 million. This is actually now a $40 million lawsuit. Y'all Jesus Christ. Uh, so cause of action three misappropriation, unfair and deceptive trade practices. Okay. Um, the first one cited New York statutes. The next laws, as far as I can tell are all common law based and who good fucking luck. As set forth more, more fully above, defendants' activities and using plaintiff's name. So this is against uh, Dick, Asterios, Tab, and Foundation Digital again. Um, oh, this is unfair competition. Uh, activities and using plaintiff's name, photograph, image, and likenesses for promoting and advertising their business on various websites cause confusion with or have been mistaken for plaintiff's activities in the mind of the public. Literally no one thinks that you did any of this. Uh, and no one is likely to, to, cause, to think that as well. Defendants acted unfairly in some manner in, plaintiff, in using plaintiff's name, blah, blah, blah. No. Uh, they misappropriated the property, labors, and expenditures of plaintiffs by... Okay. You have misunderstood the New York statute, and it's really funny. Um, there's also a New York statute on tortious interference in lawful business activities. And that's what you should have maybe brought into this. Um, although that'd be hard because you'd have to prove that you have any contracts with New York, which you don't. Uh, but none of this is actually shown in your, in your lawsuit. This is, this is shameful. 
monopolistic business practices. Dick has the only podcast, despite him naming two other people with podcasts in the in the complaint. Oh my god! Fourth cause of action: intentional infliction of emotional distress. This is ungodly difficult to prove. Like you have to prove not only that the distress occurred, but that the defendants knew it would occur. I'm going to skip this because this is going to be bullshit. Like you have to prove that you, that, that Dick, uh, who, who's involved in this one? Dick Kokonos, uh, again, tab and foundation digital that they knew that these actions would cause distress and wanted it to happen. It's intentional. You have to prove the intent of causing them severe emotional distress. Tortious interference with a business relationship. Oh my God, you actually, you did that. Uh, Plaintiff Maddox had a valid business relationship with a third party, such as his fans, developers, and other individuals. You have to show that it was a third party in New York, you idiot. Defendants knew of these relationships and intentionally interfered with them. Uh, Show me where the where the defendants intentionally interfered in a contract. That means the defendant has to know who the contract is with and contact that party. This is... You haven't shown it. Uh, So this is a million plus five million. Seventh cause of action against Dick, Asterios, Tab, and Foundation Digital. Uh, Conversion. What? What? Okay, okay, okay. Criminal conversion is where you steal something, but you um, you don't actually take it. You just uh, you deprive the other party of the use of it. So let's see what they say here. Defendants converted a variety of documents and virtual information of plaintiffs, including but not limited to computerized lists of plaintiff's fans, sponsors, and business associates, and information and documents related to plaintiff's business. How would they get this information? And private information, including phone numbers, addresses, and account informations and passwords. They didn't deprive you of the right to use any of this information, by the way, so it's not conversion uh, under the statute. That's really fucking stupid. Um, they didn't... Defendants took unauthorized prove- possession of the property and information and acted to exclude the rights of the plaintiffs to use said property. How? How did they... Uh, act to exclude your right to use this information even if they even if they published all of it online maliciously they didn't prevent you from using that information uh, eighth cause of action deceptive acts and misleading business practices false advertising in violation of general general business law 349 and 350 of the consumer protection act now i'm i'm not a new york attorney i can't comment on 349 and 350 and again, their website's been down. I don't know if it's still down. So. Critical alert from Microsoft. God damn it. Your computer has alerted us that it is infected by a virus and or spyware. This virus may be sending your credit.